periodic motion. The term periodic motion refers to any kind of motion where the same exact pattern is repeated over and over again. Some examples of periodic motion would include circular motion, the pendulum, the uh, mass bouncing back and forth on a spring, and of course, waves. Three terms commonly associated with periodic motion include period frequency and angular frequency. Let's start with period. Period is usually indicated by the letter capital T. Sometimes they use a P, but usually it's a T because period means time period. It's the amount of time it takes to complete one motion of whatever type you're talking about. Now these motions come in various varieties, but we refer to all of them by the term cycle. One complete motion is a cycle. So once around the circle, that's a cycle for the pendulum. One motion from the far left to the far right back again, that's also a cycle, and so on for the rest of them. So the amount of seconds it takes to complete one of those cycles, that is the time period. I should also mention that in the case of circular motion, we often use the word revolution instead of cycle. So cycle is a generic term that applies to any kind of periodic motion, but a revolution means one complete cycle of circular motion. You don't have to use seconds, really any time unit will do, um, minutes, hours, days, years, what have you. For example, a planet Earth has a period of revolution around the sun equal to one year. But uh, seconds is definitely what is preferred when doing scientific types of things, so you should stick with that if you possibly can. Also, I should point out that you hardly ever see this cycle. It's virtually always just written as seconds because the cycle is implied, but I think it helps to remember that. Along with period, we also have frequency. So here's frequency. We usually use the letter F for frequency, and that's simply the number of cycles per second. The uh, unit for this is often called a Hertz, abbreviated HZ. Um, some people like to get all German on you and pronounce it Hertz, but uh, Hertz will do just fine. And of course, you can see that period and frequency are reciprocals, since seconds per cycle is the reciprocal of cycles per second. And so there you have our first formula, F equals 1 over T. Not surprisingly, T is also equal to 1 over F. Moving on to angular frequency. Here we have angular frequency. We use the Greek letter omega for this not a W, and make sure that your W's and your omegas are distinct. The units for angular frequency are radians per second, and you can see how this works in the case of circular motion. Every circle has angles that you can measure in radians or degrees or what have you, and since each circle has exactly 2 pi radians, it follows then that omega is equal to 2 pi times f. After all, for each cycle, there's going to be exactly 2 pi radians. So you just convert by multiplying the cycles by 2 pi, and there you have it, radians. Now, you may have noticed that this letter omega is also used for angular speed. And in fact, if you have circular motion at a constant speed, the angular frequency and the angular speed will be exactly the same thing. But in any other situation, they will not be the same. For example, look at the pendulum. This pendulum swings back and forth through an angle, but that angle has nothing to do with these radians right here. The angular speed is actually quite complicated, but the angular frequency is still simply 2 pi times the frequency cycles per second. Similarly, with the mass and spring here, this bounces back and forth in a straight line, so how can we speak of radians in this case? Well, truthfully, we, we can't really, but we do. If you really don't like it, you can always do all your mass and spring calculations with f instead of omega. But if you do that, you'll find that this expression 2 pi f keeps popping up a lot. And so what people have done is they just decided to use omega as an abbreviation for 2 pi f just because it speeds up the math a little bit. Doesn't really mean anything in this context, but who cares, it gets the job done. Now since this f is the same as that f, 
you could combine these two equations to make yet more equations. And uh, there is a selection right there of many possible equations that you can derive from all of these. For some reason, certain teachers or textbooks like to dump all of these in your lap. I, I don't recommend that. My advice is you learn as few equations as possible. And if you can remember just two of these, I recommend these two, you can always derive all of the other two. If you don't care for these two equations, you can pick any two on this paper that you want. As long as you've got an F and a T and an omega in there somewhere, you can derive all of the others if you need them. Now, the reason why you really shouldn't try to remember any more than you have to is because you might get burned by one of these equations. Each and every one of these equations is wrong, but they're not obviously wrong at first glance. If you're trying to remember too many things, you could easily misremember one of these things by mistake. This thing used to get me every time. So don't do it. Learn as few equations as you can. Use your basic algebra skills to drive the rest. It's really pretty simple algebra. You're better off that way.